Welcome to Trintendo. I am Trintendo, and today we're gonna be doing Microvolt Madness. It's a lint roller. That's right, today we're gonna be talking about microphones. Now, I've got three microphones lined up that I have purchased, and as usual, I'm gonna tell you which one I absolutely wasted money on. Now, having said that, there are lots of other options out there for microphones. A lot of people opt to go for shotgun mics that go with the Rode, and if they're gonna do anything else, like a tabletop type microphone, they're gonna go with something like a Blue Snowball. Now, there's nothing wrong with any of those. They are worth the money that you pay for them. My only problem is that the Snowball microphone picks up a little bit too much of the room. Don't touch me, mother flower. And a lot of rooms that I shoot in have very high ceilings. It's because I live in a church. Th those microphones are fantastic. They're really good for people starting up, especially with podcasting. If you're gonna sit at the table and get a bunch of people, it will pick up everyone's audio. But again, I just don't wanna pick up too much of the environment. Come on, it's clear. What's clear? I am going to call the police. Now the Rode microphone, there's a lot of debate about that microphone because the two major models of them People just kind of go for them right out of the box, and they've been compared to other microphones, and honestly, I'm not hearing a whole lot of difference. It's not to say that they're not good quality, and they're definitely worth the money. I just ain't got that kind of money. This is how I got by on a little bit of a budget, until I wasted money. First microphone on the chopping block is the Radio Shack 333013. Catchy, huh? This is just a, you know, uh, bottom of the line lav mic. It's got a cord that is little over six feet long comes with the little clippy and the little fuzzy and it's got his battery pack it's powered by a 357 button battery which is very common for lav mics now one thing right out of the gate that's bad about this microphone is that it doesn't have like an on off light it has a switch if it's in the position where you can see on it means it's on if it's in the position of off it means it's off when i first bought this the battery was dead in it because someone had taken it out of the box played around with it and didn't put things back where they were supposed to so after spending 30 dollars which now i think it costs about 40 dollars to get one of these because they're so collectible i just had to go and buy back batteries immediately after buying the microphone. So let's test it out. What does it sound like? The anthropomorphic horse sold me an inadequate product. Not bad. It's not great. It's not bad though. One of the great things about using lav microphones is you can clip them much closer to your source of the audio. I guess if you wanted to, you could put these things on poles as well, but then you still wouldn't get it as close as you really need it to be. And it's pretty great if there's other stuff going on, you know, around in the room. Why? I'm sorry. Because it's mostly just going to get what's going to be coming out of your mouth. Now you'll notice in the playback for this microphone, it sounds a little crushed. The audio sounds a little quieter. There's also only one channel of sound. I think it was the left channel. Now, to be fair, all my microphone tests today, I'm going to have them plug straight into my Zoom H1. It has one of the best interfaces for microphones, and it's going to give us a really clear comparison. So this microphone, the Radio Shack microphone, plugged straight into the Zoom, has kind of that crushed sound, which again is not bad. It's better than using just the microphone on your camera, but I'm going to say it's about $30 wasted. It peaks way too easily. All the P's pop all the S's his. I know that's a challenge when you don't have an actual pop filter between you and the microphone, but there are other microphones that don't do that. Like this one. This right here is the Audio-Technica ATR3350. I believe this is the IS model. Yep, IS model. This is the box that it actually came in. Now the difference with this one and some of their other lav microphones is the little I and the S. This has an adapter in here so you can actually plug this into your iPhone. And then you can plug a headset into one side of the adapter. You can actually hear your audio as you're recording it, which is not bad. You can pick this up for about $35. But Trintendo, what does it sound like? David Copperfield bit a Burmese Python. Much better. You can tell the audio is very clear. I didn't have any peaking. And I will tell you, I had to cut a few things out of the Radio Shack recording because as I was moving things around, it was getting some crackling type noises, which lav mics are usually used for moving around. The Audio-Technica, I didn't have that problem. And the sound was very rich. It just, it felt more full and it was very crisp. As long as your audio interface is fine, you won't have to do any type of post work on your audio with the Audio-Technica microphone. Now, there is a downside. A few weeks ago, I was actually down in Iowa and I was recording the Fast and Furious Marathon. Don't half-ass two things, whole-ass one thing. Exactly. Mm. And when I got there, one of my microphones went out. There's three of us there, so you need three lav microphones. I get around the problem of having everybody plugged into the same audio source by just using a headphone splitter. And surprisingly, it doesn't lose any audio quality. Problem is, I ordered one of my microphones from a different source. And you should always check your sources before you wreck your horses. 
You'll notice that this model of the Audio-Technica lav mic has a connector that looks like that. The areas between the stripes are known as barrels, so you've got a three barrel connector right here. I had accidentally ordered a different model of lav mic for the same price, but it has two barrels. And a little bit of science happens when you plug these two things into one splitter. For some reason, it just cancels each other out and you have no audio. Now, luckily I was able to think fast and actually connect two microphones that had the same type of connection into one source. And then I connected the one that had the different type of connector straight into my camera. And we'll talk about audio recording sources in another video. I didn't want to bog this one down too much. So I didn't really waste my money on that one, other than the fact that one of them died. And then two weeks later, another one died. Now granted, I'm not saying Audio-Technica makes a bad product here. Those two microphones, I had had for over a year. They were the first microphones I ever started using when recording on Trintendo. I think I store them okay. I actually just coil them up nice and loosely. And I have some small hard boxes that I actually put them in inside of my pack. And they seem to have been fine for a whole year. The way that I knew the microphone was going out is every time I moved the cord, my equalizers were peaking. So it was causing some static as I was moving the cords around, meaning there was a short circuit or short in the wire or kink. I just wanted to say short circuit. Wouldn't you like to be a pepper too? What is going on? So that means I actually threw away $60. I contacted Audio-Technica and I said, hey, here's what happened. Do you offer any extended warranties? Maybe is there a better way for me to store these so it doesn't happen in the future? I told them I love their product. I love the quality that they provide, especially at the price. And they promptly never responded to me. I mean, I hate to slam a company like that and put them on blast, but I'm spending money here. And I don't have money to just keep shelling out and shelling out and shelling out. So I needed something that wasn't gonna move around, something I could store a little better. And if it could make moving around easier, that would be fantastic. The one thing that is a pain when you're using lav mics is you gotta mic people up. How about neckties? You can hand it to them and tell them to do it themselves, but then you're still gonna have to readjust because not everybody knows where to get a lav microphone. And then you've just got wires like all over you, unless you're running it behind your shirt or something like that. And then that means when you're done, you've got to run it all back underneath your shirt. So that brings us to our next microphone. This is the Tackstar SGC598. In fact, if you just start typing in Tackstar into a search engine, the SGC598 comes up. I don't know what else Tackstar makes, but this is good enough. I have some extra stuff on it right now. I have some clips, one of these little guys I showed you earlier, but this is the actual microphone. Comes in a really nice box. It's already got a shock mount that's pretty decent. It comes with extra little rubber grommets here. It's powered by a AA battery. You can see that you can change the pass on it, the extra gain, and then it's actually got a little green light lets you know when things are on. And it kind of looks cool. It doesn't have that flare of the road where it says road right there across it, but you don't need it to. It comes with actually an adjustable hot shoe mount. So the camera that I have has its own proprietary type hot shoe. Luckily, a company makes an adapter, so I was able to plug that in and then stick this right on my camera if I ever want to. But a word about this microphone. You really got to position your microphone. I mean, that, that's with anything. You can't just sit a microphone down and expect to pick everything up and it sound the way that you want it to. Unless what you want to capture is what everyone's saying in the room. Like if you're a spy or something. And then I'm sure they have their own special microphones. Or do spies order from Amazon? Do you? Do you have some secrets? Forget it. Why don't you tell Why? me? Forget Come on. it, dude. Is it some secret? No, tell me. forget it. I'll talk to you later. Either way, before I go further, let's take a listen and see what the tax star sounds like. Delicate Cowboys asked for reimbursements on their commencement. I gotta tell you, it sounds a lot like the Audio Technica. And here's what's even more amazing it shouldn't sound that much different than my audio right now because I've been recording this entire video with one. I picked up some microphone clamps, I actually got some threaded inserts that change the microphone thread to a camera tripod thread, attach them to light poles, get some extension cords for it, and then I make sure I can position the microphone where it's somewhere less than an arm's length. As long as you get it in that range, it's gonna sound pretty great. And the closer that you get, the better it's gonna sound. Now I think the place where the Rode excels is when it's wanting to pick up further out. I think the Rode does a better job of that. But this microphone costs $30, and all the parts are interchangeable. I'm not gonna be moving around with it. I don't have to coil it up. If one of my extension cables goes out, it's $2 to replace an extension cable. And you can probably take care of micing two people with one of these. As it is though, when I record multiple people, I put as many mics as I can on each individual person. And it's been working out great ever since then. In fact, all the rest of the Struggle is Real videos have happened before this, and a few that have happened after this have been recorded with that microphone. And the whole thing's... So that's my lesson right there. I've probably put 
$200 into microphones that I don't use anymore. If I would have known, I would have put $60 into the tax star. And this wasn't a situation where I thought, oh, I'm just gonna go for the cheapest thing and see if I can make it work. I didn't know about different styles of miking. I didn't know what it would entail. Truth be told, I got this idea because I'd heard that Rhett and Link on Good Mythical Morning actually mic with shotgun mics just above the frame. Granted, they're very expensive shotgun microphones, so that's why their audio sounds so much better than mine. Speaking of, let's do a side-by-side -side comparison of all of them just one more time before I leave you. The chicken nugget jumped off of the Empire State Building. I forgot pineapple for Grandma's picnic. Please tell Jonathan Taylor Thomas thank you for the jelly donut. So there you have it. For my money, if you're starting out and you want to try and do a YouTube channel or record any kind of video and audio, go straight for the tax star. I knew from the beginning that one of the most important things when I was recording was going to be my audio. I've had years of experience making podcasts, but recording a podcast is very, very different. This was going to need to be something that we didn't see in the scene that also sounded pretty good. And I'll actually talk about in a future video how I record podcasts. So thank you for watching. I hope this was helpful. Come back and watch some more videos. Share them so I can get some more views. And now if you don't mind, I have some business to attend to.